Pierre Normandin is a senior designer for LEGO City and LEGO creator expert. After joining a LEGO user group in Quebec, he began his official toy designer journey as a designer for Mega Blocks. But the experience must have paid off. Pierre joined the LEGO group in 2008 and has bought us some awesome sets. Welcome, Pierre. And Thanks for having me. A lot of the sets we're seeing now are being labelled for 18 plus. Was it a strategic decision by Lego not to call them adult toys? We had different talks about uh, discussions uh, how we should call ourselves. But I think it's just a statement saying the adult market, uh, you guys out there are very important for your company. Have you ever popped any kind of personal Easter eggs in any of the sets that you have designed? You know what? The only Easter egg I have in a set is probably in the uh, Fiat 500 set. I did notice that, yes. The little yellow car uh, one. Mm -hmm. So on the painting, you see the Colosseum in the background and, well, what's just been announced uh, recently. Yeah. Is there any competitiveness between your department and Technic when you're building something like the Fiat? Sometimes we have models that we say, okay, we're going to try to avoid that kind of model because Technic is doing it or vice versa or sometimes we even fight a bit more because we want to do it more. Um, it, it does happen, um, but it's never uh, very serious. I mean, it's, it's all, we're a big family. We're all, uh, we want the best for the company and, and for the fans. And so we just align basically together uh, on what we're doing. Yeah. One of my favorite things are the creative modulars because they're so beautiful and give us the warm, fuzzy feelings. But over time, especially when they started, they were, they were quite primitive. So as they've kind of evolved, especially internally, is that something that was directed predominantly by your team from the start or was it influenced by the AFOL community? You know, when the Cafe Corner uh, started, it was really uh, an experiment. Um, mm. Nobody knew it would be as successful as the line that it is yeah. now. Every single time there's a new one, we try to uh, enhance the experience and uh, to give a, a better value even and uh, more stories. Uh, we don't name characters yet, but yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can see that there, there's, you know, in the bookshop, for example, there are couples and uh, a story with the, the, the plane and the tree and stuff like that. So it's, um, or with the detective office, with the cookies uh, being smuggled and stuff like that. It is, <laughs> it, it's fun. Yeah, it, it's, it's good to hear that uh, you enjoy that. Yeah, I love the modulars. Um, we were just speaking to Thomas Foley, who um, is obviously the, the uh, instructions designer, but he also deals with the designers quite regularly and can be kind of the parts police, if you will, and <laughs> tell you what, you might have to change out some parts. Have you ever been limited by some parts in the design? Yeah, we have limitations um, that are more linked to budgets or part availability in some colors. What you don't see is that sometimes we retire pieces also. <laughs> yeah. um, after a few years, you're like, hmm, it's been a while, we haven't seen that piece. <laughs> what is your brick pit like? Um, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> how many How many millions of bricks are we, are we talking? Exactly. Five million, 10 million? It, I actually don't know, but when when the bin is empty, we just get more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so infinite is the answer. Yeah, well, more or less. I mean, you ever fight over bricks? Like if you've got the last one in the bin, but your colleague next door also needs that piece, is there a bit of kind of banter that goes on? Do you trade off? We behave. We're good people, we behave. <laughs> um, no, we don't fight. Um, Quite often, it's to build uh, sketch models in any way. So, for example, yesterday I had pieces that I needed uh, quantity, and I just used a different color because it's a sketch model. I'll change the color later. Uh, it's no problem. So we're flexible like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going, going to the basement and get those archive sets. Like, <laughs> <laughs> is it? Um... No, but it does happen. It does happen that we um, take apart some sketch models or other models too, or copies to vampirize them. Is it someone's job to keep all your uh, brick pit drawers filled at all times? It, it's something we wish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Who's ordering the pizzas for you guys? Well, we have in the building, we have a big room with we call this tuck and it has uh, everything there or well, almost everything. Sometimes um, it's empty and we go to the teams next door and empty their drawers and <laughs> until we're like, oh, okay, now I need to go to the stock and fill it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> You've done quite a few train sets. Now the train world is almost a whole other and passionate subculture of Lego. Does this create extra pressure when designing these sets? Um, it does a little bit, but um, I'm kind of used to it. I'm also from the fan community. I was doing trains uh, before, so I know what you guys uh, expect. Um, when I say that, uh, obviously we all have different expectations. Uh, some people build different scales and different ambitions. Some are just displaying, some are building uh, their own creations and they just want parts. So it's, it's a mix. Have you ever received any feedback that has truly helped you in your design processes? To be honest, the best feedback I got myself personally is when chatting one-on-one -on -one with people, say at fan events. The most constructive comments is really when you can interact with people a bit more and go uh, in deep. Has there ever been a design feature that you've really had to fight hard for to be included on a set? At one point, we have to understand we're doing models for someone else. For you guys, for kids, for different targets, right? I was developing a model on the side, like as a mock. And um, my boss saw it, well, I should put it to my boss, and he's like, wow, okay, that's a cool model. That yeah, It came out of nowhere, and now, Maybe we need to make room for that model in the assortment. So that was cool. That That's was okay. actually... That's pretty cool. Oh, here we go. Um, it was that one, if you remember in City Oh, Life. I'm, I'm sure yeah. I have that, yeah. Yeah. So I did that. It was a different color. It was with the colors of the um, uh, private company here in Denmark. Um, but the design stayed more the same. Yeah, Lego City has covered some really cool things over time. So we've had things like police stations and fire and coast guard. And are there any themes that we haven't seen yet that you would like to see? If I told you, we could not do <laughs> it. Because <laughs> yeah. I've some suggestions. Yeah. Like I'd like to see maybe um, some education based sets or a nice school or something that supports small business. So, you know, little shop fronts, things like that. Mm, we, we also see a lot of bank robbers, but how about something a little bit more modern like cybercrime? There's been so many different ideas. Some are good, <laughs> some are not so good. Uh, the, the police um, petty theft department. <laughs> choice uh, or the result of uh, tests, testing. Yeah, cool. So kids have quite a lot of say. That's good. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, clearly, clearly. Even adults, I mean, we are testing as well for adults. Um, and sometimes we're surprised because uh, we're obviously a bunch of adults in the, uh, the team and we have preferences. Uh, many of us are uh, have been part or are part of the adult fan community. Sometimes we're like, oh yeah, this is going to be super awesome and we'll just do it like this and that. And then we go testing and they're like, nah. <laughs> Sometimes we think, oh yeah, it's those adults uh, in, um, in in the fan community. They're going to fan events and they're uh, they do shows and exhibitions and stuff. But we have a huge part of our consumer base that is normal uh, people that don't know anything about the community. They just see our products on the shelves and they like them and they buy them. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to be aware that. Not everyone is part of a log. Not everyone is part of the community, online community even. So we have to cater for a very broad uh, consumer base. We do need to talk about your dark past. Now, I don't want to say the company name, but it rhymes with mega schmocks. <laughs> do the other designers at work kind of bring this up and make fun of you for your, uh, your dirty past? Not, not really. Um, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> little, little bit, but it, it's known. Um, I, I don't have it uh, written on my forehead all the time, but... Uh, you don't wear the polo uh, shirt anymore? No, no. <laughs> Never had, actually. To be honest, it's a, it's a work experience. Um, 
in the business in that industry that so gave me uh, uh, I would say some kind of uh, advantage uh, coming here. Um, yeah. I knew what the industry was before turning at Lego, so I know there was some limitations. Um, so when I arrived here, I knew what to expect. So I was not disappointed. I could not do whatever I wanted. But yeah, it, it was a great experience. Uh, I don't regret that at all. Uh, I, if I had to choose, I would do it again. Uh, again, I've always been a Lego fan. Um, they knew that when they hired me. They knew I was a Lego fan. That's basically why I got hired because I was good at building. Well, look, if, if the phone ever rings and it's Lepin, just hang up because yeah. uh, that's not going to end well. Because we like you in Lego. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you so much for joining us for Brickbench in 2021 and for bringing us so many cool uh, Lego City and Lego Creator set. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Keep an eye on this playlist, plus subscribe and set reminders so you don't miss a thing at Brickbench in 2021.